Chú Nên đang nói chuyện với ai vậy? Nói chuyện với bạn mình Bạn bạn nào? Bạn mình đó Bạn bạn, bạn mình Bạn mình đang đứng kìa Bạn sai rồi phải không? Ờ sai rồi Hey everybody, it is me Kyle and I am on one of my favorite streets here in Saigon, Zheng Sung Song. And as you can see, the uniqueness of the canals make this place really, really special. But it has a lot of good eats as well and that's exactly why I am here tonight in District 7. So join me for another video for Vietnam. Con chú ông bển nào ông về bây giờ ông nói chuyện cứng ngắc à Thôi không hiểu được ông, ông, ông nói chuyện Việt Nam cũng được mà ông nói hơi cứng như hồi xưa Ờ à, cái cái à, cái 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 giọng nói như ngày xưa phải không Ủa anh anh ngồi đây phải không Dạ À ok Xô như là cái cái việc làm của anh là Là bán Bán trái cây Rồi anh ở ghe luôn Cái bên này là cái Cái đó mẹ anh phải không À ok ok so, Một lát lúc mà em quay lại Tại vì em sẽ đi ăn rồi lát em quay lại là nếu nếu mà à, 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 em sẽ ghé anh ghé anh nha rồi, rồi mua thơm anh gọt cho em luôn được không làm hết luôn phải không Okay, and the first spot that I've decided to sit down at is this place, uh, some me. And uh, Khan is here, he's back. Uh, shout out to Aldo. Uh, hey, where is, he, where is he, by the way? He's at Aldo's home. home. Where's home? Home's uh, right around the corner. Oh, he's here? Yeah, he's here. Oh, yeah, he's here. oh maybe we'll go meet him later. Yeah. Right, anyways, so, <laughs> uh, the me here is special because it has uh, what is the white stuff? I forgot. Oh, hu, hu tiu as well. So this is hu tiu mi, and it's very rare. Like you don't see hu tiu mi in America. It's, it's a it's a very Vietnamese thing. Khan says this is like one of the best ones he's had, right? Okay. Really good. <clears throat> okay, good. Already the broth is not too salty. Um, very sweet. But if you guys didn't know, mi is one of my favorite things, and I haven't eaten all day. This is actually my first meal. Right? I've been up all night, haven't slept, went to work, came home, slept for about two and a half hours, and now I'm here. 
the hukdiu with the meat, it, it, it's very interesting because it adds a different layer of texture to this, right? If it's just meat by itself, one slurp, a couple of bites and you're done, but the, the hukdiu kind of makes you appreciate the bowl more because you have to eat it slower because the noodles are actually very thick. So this is definitely something that you're not going to find back home anywhere. Uh, hukdiu meat. Normally I'm not a hukdiu type of a guy, but I think this blend works very well. And the broth here is actually excellent too. And the bowl here is like 30,000 dong, which is like a dollar and 30 something cents. So you're not going to expect a lot of protein, but that's okay because the nut is still young and we're going to eat a lot more things to come, so no worries. Okay, so we are done here. Uh, let's see what else is on Jensung Song. There is supposed to be a boat it's very unique. I know I've said unique like 10 times before in this video, but um, there's a boat and we're gonna go sit on it. Uh, that's quite exciting, I hope, I hope you realize that. All right, so we stumbled upon uh, these two. Uh, ah, so I stumbled upon these two. They sell uh, dried fish, dried shrimps, dried sausages in the streets in the carts like this. When you high into our Ah, okay. Ah, okay. So they live in the alley along Jamsung Song. And let's see what let's see what they have for sale. So they just go in the streets and sell like dried stuff like this. Dried fish. Wow. Dried fish. Cool. Wow, they've been selling for 16 years. Wow, look at all this. Cool, wow. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, some of these boats that you see over here by the river, they come up every day from the countryside. Or some of them actually stay here. Let's see what I got right here. From the guy. Oh man, all of this, this little watermelon and pineapple. For a dollar, 20,000 dong. That's incredible, man. Okay, and that's gonna wrap it up here from Jensen Song. But as you can see, it's very different than the rest of Saigon. And the waters here, they don't smell that much, at least not today. Uh, I recommend getting dropped off here if you have an afternoon free before sunset. Uh, maybe have uh, an early dinner at Ban Gan Gu Ngoc Jin, Jensen Song here. Stop by their shop and then walk straight down that direction towards the bridge and keep walking because there's another bridge down there that leads to another market. So if you have time in Saigon, I highly recommend it. This is one of the most unique streets that you can possibly visit. And it's not touristy, trust me. Well, maybe after this video it might be, but who knows. All right, we're gonna go uh, eat dinner with the Russo family now. Water buffalo meat. Gotta dip it into some of that chow. It's 
very chewy, very muscular, right? Yep. But it tastes like a very concentrated, flavorful beef. Wow, that definitely has to be one of the most flavorful meats I've ever tried. But I feel bad though because the water buffalo is such a majestic animal. Like it in the rice field, it's so symbolic of Vietnam, you know what I mean? Like some people feel bad about eating a dog. I feel very guilty about eating a water buffalo, man. Like, you know, it's such a friendly giant beast. A cow is different. A cow is not majestic, you know what I mean? Beef, I'll eat it all day. The water buffalo, I feel Cows have those nice eyes. I feel bad too. I don't feel bad when I eat a cow, but a water buffalo, man, that's like, that's like the Vietnamese animal, right? Like, come on, you know, that's like, that's like eating Vietnam, man. And I'm not talking about fog, man. I feel bad. I've been to Vietnam how many times? Probably at least 20. Well, at least 20 times. 20 times. And tell me about what you told me earlier about people who are afraid to come here. Well, really, you know, when, when, when uh, foreign people say they don't want to come here, I understand they have a reason, but when you're Viet Gu, born in Vietnam, leave Vietnam, you know, typically when you're five or six years old, however you left, whether by boat, by visa, by escape, you know, whatever, and then you don't want to come back. It, it's being here so many times and having such great experiences here with, with the Vietnamese people and just how, how wonderful they are and how accepting they are. And, uh, you know, just, you know, having all these great experiences, there's really nothing to worry about. You know, years ago, friends of mine used to say that it was tough to come back here because there might be a problem coming in and there might be a, you know, some kind of a consequential thing in the airport or something. I've I mean, never, it had just, never, never, yeah, never had that. It, it doesn't happen. It just it doesn't it happen. Just doesn't, I've never seen it. I've been through the airport at least 30 times between flying domestically within Vietnam and, and flying internationally to uh, Tan Sien Yat and Noi Bai and, and right. some of the smaller airports, sure. uh, Ya Lai, Kong Dung, and um, like, it's just people need to know the rules, right? They just need to know their own rights in a sense, which you do have, by the way. Well, well what, what I do is I, I mean, literally, when I get on the airplane, I take the United States computer chip out of my brain and I put the Vietnamese computer chip in my brain. And if you can just get to that state of mind where it's a different set of rules, it's a different, it's a different culture, and uh, you do that, and, and you just never have a problem I mean, Literally, I've never ever had one problem here. And I've probably spent two and a half years of my life here, in, in all, adding up all the time, two years of my life here, um, and, and never one problem what, ever. What about safety issues? People always talk about like food and crime. Okay, so with food, the only thing is, you know, our, our, our system of bacteria in our stomach and things is, it's very different. So we're used to certain bacteria and certain viruses, and it's different here. So it's it's going to happen. It's inevitable. It's like a time bomb. It, at some point, you're going to get sick. And there's nothing to say whether it's the dirty food on the street that, and it really isn't. I mean, it's you, like, don't know, you, right? you, you don't know. You don't know. You're, you're, we're in the United States, and we never go back into the kitchens and see the way food is prepared and things, and who's preparing it, and what their hands touched right before they touched your food. No matter where you're at, everyone's so stomach is different. Yeah, in a yeah. sense, right? Like I would go to the same restaurant and not have a problem, but with my friends, they would have major issues. Yeah. So you know, or even when I went back to America, I had issues. A lot of people say don't don't drink the ice, and right. I can't say that I've ever had a specific problem with ice. But you get it. I mean, it's you know, it's a and you're gonna have it's a. It's a is the Vietnamese word for uh, something sloppy, something messy, right? But then once it goes, it goes, right? And like for me, it never lingers. It's like gone. 
maybe once or twice a day. Yeah, don't take modium. Just let it rip, let, let it go, and be done, it. and get it out of your body. But you have to prepare the bowel movements in the morning as best as you can. But that's for another day. Drink some strong Vietnamese coffee. That's my <laughs> suggestion. That, that'll get it going. What about uh, crime? Uh, safety issues and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, um, and, and even you know, and even for for women traveling, uh, I, I've never seen ever. I've never seen. Vietnamese people do anything bad or hear about anything bad. And I've seen plenty of foreign women, VQ you women, know the guy that uh, the you know, or walking down the road at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. Like and I've never like ever this. seen a person bother them, harass like them, that, like, molest like them, like anything. Like never. Yeah. Uh, I've only seen good. Uh, uh, people are very helpful. The only thing that I say is like, when I'm here, obviously, I, I just don't. Because I don't wear jewelry for my job in the United States anyway, I just don't. Uh, I don't wear any jewelry because I don't. I don't want anyone to feel like because I have jewelry or something that I'm better than them anyway. Not that that makes a difference, but for me, it's just my way of, of trying to fit in better. It, you know, part of that computer chip thing. And uh, the only thing that I can say is don't use your iPhone six on the street because somebody's gonna get you. That's that's the thing that I've heard about. I've never seen it. But there's plenty of videos online of people getting their computer ripped out of their hand or you know getting whacked in the head and their Right. But that that only usually happens in the major cities though. Right? Yeah, it's well, not absolutely. gonna happen absolutely. in the countryside. Like even yeah. in a province like Ben Yung or Dong Nai for no, example, right? No. Like Saigon, it might happen in District One. Yeah. But it's not gonna happen in like in the middle of Gaobak. Alright. Yeah. Or Ben Chan or probably, maybe Chen, probably I don't not know. but but that's you know maybe the only safety thing. If you need to use your cell phone, you know, you just kind of you take it out and you have to have a cheap one like me, first of all, because I, I can't afford my phone six. But you just have a, an old one. And, and if you're going to use it, don't use it on the street side. Make sure you use it on the sidewalk side. Make sure you use it on the sidewalk side. And, and when I do it, I use two hands. Oh, I actually right. use two hands and I do this. It's not a rampant thing, right? Like, I don't want no, people to no, have an idea not. like, I take my phone out, I'm, somebody's going to jump me. Right? No, you, they will do it if the situation is right. If you're in the middle of traffic, right, and you're like, oh, I'm taking a photo like this, yeah, or you're taking a selfie, maybe, right? But it's not always gonna happen. I've never felt unsafe with the camera setup, and this is a little bit big. It's not. It's very noticeable. Yeah, yeah, the setup is very noticeable, right? I've never felt unsafe. Uh, Phone-wise, I feel comfortable, but it just depends on the situation. So it's not that scary. It's scary, but it's not that scary. I would never bring my kids and put them in harm's way, even though my wife is Vietnamese and my kids are half Vietnamese. You know, I would never, I would never put them in harm's way. And you just, you don't get that feeling here. People are, are you never can go anywhere and get that warm feeling with the people, with the culture, and with the food that yeah. you get in Vietnam. There's no place else on earth, I feel, <laughs> that you could get that feeling. What, don't, but, okay, what's safer, Connecticut or Vietnam? Vietnam, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. interesting. Because my idea of Connecticut is yeah. like, like big trees and like like big like houses spaced apart from each other. Okay, so I live about 20 miles from New Haven. Yeah, New Haven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And go to New Haven for one night. I would never, ever, ever walk in New Haven in in, in some of the areas at night by myself. Last thoughts. Like, if, if there's people who want to come here and can't, what, what, what would you say to them? Like, if they feel, if they still feel like eh, iffy about, if they're on the fence about, it, what would you say to them? Come. Your, your, your country wants you back. They they wanna they wanna have the experiences. Your family misses you. Your family misses you. Come see your they, family. They miss come you. see grandma. Grandma wants you to come back and and, and have a beer with her. They, they, they miss the M&M's. Yeah. <laughs> the real yeah, M&M's. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, you can't get the real M&M's in Saigon. The Costco M&M's. Yeah. 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 The big 20-pound yeah. yeah. That's true. That's true. <laughs> well, That's true. thank you, Dean, for sharing your experience. Yeah. This thank guy you. knows thank Vietnam you. really well. That is a wrap for tonight. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. Have you ever... Okay, there is a flickering light and it is freaking me out. Living alone, I always fear random things like noises, and just the wind. The wind can be quite scary at times. But just... That light is bothering me. But just 
let me know if you tried anything and feel remorse over it. Because right now I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, man, that water buffalo would have been so majestic out in the fields with like an egret on its back and a little boy riding it with like one of those like weird haircuts like this a three thing and like blowing on the flute that 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 was quite majestic and here it sits inside my belly anyways it was pretty good though i have to admit really excellent follow me on social media to stay up to date with what i'm doing and where i'm at i'm really trying to grow this channel by doing more content better content for you so please tell your friends about me it's the only way that I can keep making the best and freshest content from the motherland in all fields. <sighs> Something new in Saigon all the time, I'm telling you, man. Something new. All the time. I am probably going to just go to bed now and I'll wake up later to edit this video and probably watch SummerSlam after. Yes. I like WWE a lot. In fact, a long time ago, I wanted to be a WWE wrestler. <laughs> <laughs>when you're walking along the street here you kind of have to be careful because uh, people can be drunk and they can hit you from behind so just a heads up okay? be careful